Sure. Um, you know, we're in the extremely uh, challenging part of our season, obviously, with uh, the game this week against Ohio State, um, one of the top programs in the country. Um, you know, as I mentioned Saturday, I thought there were some positives from our game against Michigan. And, and as I've said many times, uh, we are a work in progress as a program. And But there were some things that I liked uh, that I saw in terms of us competing and, and, and the, the, the effort in which we played with for four quarters, which was something that we haven't got consistently out of our team. So, and I think we will be able to build on that. Um, you know, we started that process obviously yesterday in terms of our preparation for Ohio State, a uh, very formidable opponent that, again, uh, really strong in all three phases of the game uh, offensively. Uh, you know, their quarterback, uh, Justin Fields, a big time player. Uh, J.K. Dobbins, the running back, and then the host of talent they have at the receiver position uh, pose a, a tough challenge for us, one that I know our players and our coaches are excited about this opportunity. You know, defensively, with players like Chase Young and a bunch of those great players on the back end, they're secondary. Uh, they've got a corner that's a NFL first-round draft pick. So, um, again, it will be a challenge. And, and, and the, the good thing is our team and a lot of guys in our locker room part of the game from last year that I would hope uh, will give us some confidence going into the game that when they play the type of football we're capable of playing and compete with the effort that we compete with that uh, on any given Saturday things like last year and obviously we didn't finish the win but I thought that they competed enough to hopefully go into this game playing with some confidence you know obviously a lot has changed with both teams from last year but I do think the confidence of knowing that they went and played toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe with one of the top programs in the country, which Ohio State was last year, something that I hope to build upon with our guys going in with some confidence. Um, but at the end of the day, it goes back to what I've said time and time again, that it starts with us. The focus has to be on us and the Terps doing the things that we need to do from a habits and behavior standpoint to go out and compete to give ourselves a chance to win a, a, a tough game against a tough opponent on the road. Uh, with that, I'll open it up to questions. Mike, can you talk about Terrence Davis not being on the depth chart this week? What's his situation with injury or anything else? Well, obviously, you know, Terrence came back from an a, a MCL strain and has really battled uh, to play. He came back and played in the Minnesota game, and then he tweaked it uh, last week. And so, you know, we're at this point with Terrence where if he's not able to be 100% for us, you know, because he's only played in four games, there is a chance that we could use the red shirt year. Uh, for uh, for him this year, which will allow him to come back. Uh, again, we haven't made a final decision on it. Obviously, it's based on his health and where he is, but he hasn't been 100%. When he came back for the Minnesota game, he went out and I thought played well. It was great to have the experience back and then kind of maybe re-aggravated re the injury during the course of last week's preparation. So we're evaluating him on a day-to-day -day basis. And if he's not able to be 100% or close to it, then because of them only playing in four games, we would have the option of maybe utilizing the red shirt here. Coach, the elephant or Buckeye in the room, Chase Young, uh, what impresses uh, you of what you see from him on tape? How do they scheme to take advantage of him, and what's the priority in uh, negating? You know, I, I think the big thing is just, uh, you know, with Chase, he's, such a, he's become such a complete player. You know, when you watch him in, in his early years, he was a guy that was a designated pass rusher, a guy that got after the, the quarterback. And now you see him playing and fitting the run. And uh, they do a great job of uh, trying to get him matched up on weaknesses. And so uh, his size, his speed, his athleticism, and his power um, are all the things that make him a great player and be a tough, uh, a tough opponent for us. And they do a good job, again, of trying to create the matchups. And what we've got to do, obviously, when we game plan and week to week, it's how to take away the guys that can wreck your game plan. And so you can bet that he'll have our full attention in how we protect and turn the protection and help uh, make sure that we don't allow him to disrupt what we want to do uh, to try to move the football. Uh, kind of going off that, with Ohio State's defense, um, Without going into your game plan, what type of things can you do to, to put Josh in a in a good situation um, where he's going to be able to throw the ball successfully? So I think whoever our quarterback is, I mean, it starts with being able to effectively run the football. You know, this is the time of year where you have to run the football to be successful. 
Um, you know, our passing game has been really challenging the last couple of weeks, whether it's the timing, uh, whether it's the drop balls, whether it's creating separation. You know, last week we went into the game against Michigan with the intent to slow the game down and shorten it and uh, run the ball effectively, which I thought we did at times. Um, Obviously, we got behind enough to where we had to adjust on the fly there in the second half to catch up because we couldn't execute in the red zone. But, you know, I would venture to say that we're going to have to be able to run the football, uh, which to me, I think that's the one area where I've seen some improvement with our young offensive line is our ability to find ways to manufacture uh, plays in the run game. You know, with the RPO stuff that we've been good at at times, uh, it gets back to our receivers having to create some separation or us getting into the type of formations where we can create the separation, whether it's through, you know, some of the mesh stuff, some of the pick stuff, and some of the man schemes that we do in the passing game. Uh, with Javon Lee getting his second kick return touchdown last game, and that being kind of a bright spot for you guys this year, what do you think of just the effective, effectiveness of, you know, that kick return unit so far this season? Um, you know, up until Saturday, I thought our special teams was the one bright spot of the three phases. We've covered kicks really well all year long. Uh, we've, returned, we've covered punts. We've returned a punt uh, close to a touchdown there in the Temple game. We've had some long kick returns. So that had been a, a strength of our team. And then, you know, Saturday, I thought our special teams was the area that hurt us the most because we didn't punt the ball effectively with the two young punters to change the field position. We missed the field goal. Uh, obviously, giving up the kickoff return on the first play of the game kind of sucked some of the life out of out of uh, the momentum that we wanted to create. So um, I'm hoping we can get back to playing really sound in that, that phase of the game, the special teams. Javon, the last three to four weeks have been one of our most consistent players. He's uh, made plays for us as a running back. He's made plays for us as a returner. We put him back there last week. He, kept, he caught a punt, which you know, you'll continue to see us find ways to keep him involved because he has big playability. And, and I've been really pleased with how he's matured the, you know, this season and to where he's become one of our, our best players. Coach, in what ways have you seen that cross progress maybe week to week now that he has had more and more playing time, more and more starting time? Yeah, you know, as, as now as he's worked himself into a starting role, I think Nick's confidence is the thing that you see the most. You know, on the back end, I talked earlier in the year about the lack of communication amongst our safeties and the type of communication that you have to have effectively to keep the ball in front of you from the back end. and. Nick has really, again, put the time and energy and effort into learning the position. You know, he's not playing it perfectly, but he is making some plays for us. He has been disruptive. He's been a guy that's, you know, has flashed on film and has been a short tackler for us. So I've been really pleased with how he's progressed with the way he's been able to play. And, and, and again, I think playing him early and some of the meaningful plays he took early, earlier in the season has allowed him to grow in the position. I've been pleased with how he's grown. You mentioned um, Keandre's effort at the end of the game last week. Um, in terms of the year he's had and the leadership he's brought, um, how has that how does that translate into a week like this where he's going back to play against his own team? Yeah, I, I think you know Keandre. The one thing that he's shown throughout his career, and even again, like I said, I've known him since eighth grade, ninth grade, having recruited him, is he's been really mature beyond his years and. Uh, you know, the leadership he's brought to this program, obviously, I think is a direct reflection of what he's learned or what the experiences he's had at a place like Ohio State. And so it's been great to have that here in our locker room and for our younger players to utilize him as a resource for how you approach the game, how you approach practice, how you approach school, and, and all the areas that you need to. Um, obviously, uh, going back to Ohio State, I'm sure always kind of drums up emotions but one of the things we've tried to talk about and we've tried to set as a standard for us is that it's okay to have emotion but not be emotional. And I think Keandre has done a great job of that. And I think this week, because of his maturity, he understands he's going back to face friends and a program that has pretty much put him in the position he's in now. Uh, and he respects that part of it, but he's such a competitor. I know that you know we'll get his best because we have in all the other games. And this is just another one of those games obviously with having people on the other side that he's really familiar with. I'm sure there's some personal things there that, that he'll, he would enjoy to be able to do, but uh, I think he'll approach it the way he has each game we've had thus far. Hey, Coach, uh, McFarland had a wonderful game last year against Ohio State. Uh, 
he's been battling that ankle. Is is he close to 100 percent? Would you expect a huge contribution from him this weekend? It, it would be nice to have that type of contribution from him. You know, he he has battled the injury. He, he's you know worked himself back. I thought last week we saw glimpses of him and in, in the burst that he'd shown on a couple of the interior runs we've had. Um, you know, is he 100 percent again? Those. Those ankles and the high ankle sprain with the steel guide are always tough. And really rest and time are the only things that allow it to get back to that point. But I've been pleased with the way he's progressed off of it uh, since he's you know missed the game two, three weeks ago. But uh, you know, it would sure be nice to get that type of production out of Ant. Uh, Javon, like I said, has done some great things for us. And those two guys along with Fleet Davis who comes in and then kind of is a jack of all trades for us. It's been a bright spot for us. So it'd be good to get that out of Ant this week. Uh, Dante Dimas has obviously had great moments this year and then uh, had kind of a rough game a couple weeks ago. How, how have you seen him respond and kind of correct mistakes and, and move on from that day? I mean, he's, he's like a lot of the young players, you know, true sophomore uh, that have the ups and downs and the inconsistencies that just come with being uh, a young player, uh, obviously with the you know, some of the drops that he's had, but he's made a bunch of plays for us in other games. We work through it. I've seen him respond the right way. Uh, he gets it. He's one of those guys that really cares and really wants to do well for his teammates and for himself. So um, I, I don't question that piece of it, but I just think you'll continue to see him mature. And with every game and every rep, you'll see him get better to where, you know, eventually the consistency will be there where you'll know what you're going to get playing and play out out of Dante Demas's. He's a really good player. You mentioned how, you know, the way they were able to, the way this team was able to keep up with Ohio State last year gives them some confidence. I know, you know, obviously two, you know, very different looking teams, but how much do you talk about that game with the guys this week and, you know, go over that film and, uh, you know, the end of that game with them? You know, as I said, though, we're two different teams than we were a year ago. I do think because of the confidence that should come with, playing a game like they played last year against a really good Ohio State team last season. Um, the only thing we'll talk about or take away from that game was the fact that, again, they're the same type of program that they were last year. And, uh, you know, we showed up and we played with the right kind of effort and the right kind of habits and behaviors and gave themselves a chance to win the game there in the end. So to me, that's as far as it goes in terms of what we can take away from last year. You know, obviously the offenses are different. Our offense is different. What we do on defense is different. Um, so to watch that film really doesn't help us much other than you would hope that because a lot of players are in that locker room that played a team that, that's very similar to this team in terms of how competitive they are and the type of rankings that they come in with, that um, they went out and played their best and they gave themselves a chance. And that's all we want to see out of our guys. Mike, before when you asked about Josh, you said where will be playing quarterback. Um, is there a question as to who's going to start on Saturday and what, what's Piggy's situation and would you think about using um, uh, Lance again in that situation or, or do you think it might be a little bit or will we wait until the last couple of games? Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously we, we, we haven't named Josh the starter. Um, He's the guy that started last game. Piggy started the game before. You know, as I said, we'd love to be able to come in here and say, hey, this guy is our starting quarterback. But again, that position has just been a work in progress for us. I mean, I think there's some things that Josh brings to the table that, uh, that I have a comfort level with in terms of being able to operate. But I also think that again, you know, how we prepare this week, the quarterback that does things as we implement our game plan, it gives us the best chance to attack. You know, Ohio State's defense will be the guy that we, we name. Um, it'll be a game time decision. You know, again, we'll rep those two piggies healthy this week. Uh, those two will take the majority of the reps with the ones and twos, and as we're limited in depth, um, so they'll both get a good amount of the work, and then we'll just see which one of those guys uh, has the best grasp of what we want to do to, to to try to attack Ohio State's defense and name that guy a starter uh, as we get closer to game time. Mike, uh, how would you evaluate Lance's work last week? And is it is it safe to say that you're probably still going to try to keep the red shirt on him uh, by the end of the month, use him no more than two out of the next three games? Um, it would be safe to say, but again, we're, we're going to try to do whatever it takes to win. If we think Lance gives us a chance to win this game, we're going to do that. Um, 
I thought last week, seeing Lance operate some of the things that we asked him to do, you obviously see the athleticism and the talent, um, you know, but there was a limited package that we had going into that game. And as I said on Saturday, we're going to utilize the, the four game redshirt uh, rule to be able to develop uh, depth at our skill O-line or wherever we can. Um, and then week to week, you know, every Saturday we evaluate how we want to play our players and we take into consideration how many games they have available to play to keep the red shirt. And, and so we'll continue to do that with Lance as well.